Hello, my name is Dennis Laguerre. I have a company called Laguerre Engineering Consult Fire Department Consulting. Um, I'm going to be teaching FDIC this coming year in 2018. I submitted a class with a lengthy title as usual. You know, the title is Proper Handline Hose Selection for Your Fire Department, Hose Fleet Evaluation, Target Flow, Nozzle Pressure, Water Velocity, NFPA 1962 Impacts, and Strategy and Tactics How to Prevent Burn Through in Your Hose in the field. Um, first off, the most important thing when selecting fire hose, you need to know whether you're going to be operating in the 40 to 60 PSI nozzle range or the 100 PSI or 75 PSI nozzle range. Um, another word for nozzle, nozzle pressure should be back pressure and back pressure uh, affects the type of construction of hose you can be in. You know, every firefighter Here's these words when he learns ladder, you know, head, butt, spur, beam, rung. But how much do you really know about your hose? You know, what can you tell me about the construction of this hose? Do you know what a pick count is? Do you know what the weft is? Do you know what the filler is? Do you know what the warp is? Do you know how they make the liner material? Thermoplastic polyurethane versus through the weave rubber nitrile versus a rubber liner. You know, the, this is our lifeline in the fire service. How much do you actually know about hose? Why do some hose bend easily? Why do some hose remain stiff? Why does some hose stiffen over time? Why does some hose break in very well? And why does some hose break in too well and end up being too soft for your operation? You know, you know, do you understand the construction of this type of hose? Rubber through the weave nitrile compared to this hose, which looks like a woven jacket product but it has similar construction on the inside. What's the benefits? What's the risks? What's the pros and cons? How much do we really know about the fire hose we're using? These are very similar constructions, rubber liners, right? One has a much thicker rubber liner, much thinner rubber liner. Do you know that these are marked both inch and three quarter hose, but one might be 1.88 inches and one might be closer to inch and three quarter. Do you know most inch and a half hose is nearly inch and three quarter. A lot of it's 1.7 or greater. Are you an inch and a half hose and can you flow 150 gallons a minute and meet NFPA 1710 for the first two lines flowing 300 gallons a minute? You might be able to do that depending on how you select your nozzles. Right? There's a lot of hose manufacturers right now trying to address some of these issues with nozzle width and hose velocity. Right? If you're in inch and three quarter hose and it happens to be 1.8 inch eight inch hose and you're only flowing 160 gallons a minute, the water's gonna travel slower through here. 1.8 inch hose was developed by the FDNY when they invented the 1516th tip. It follows the Freeman principle of the half the hose diameter equals the nozzle size for ideal hose velocity. You know, do you know who Freeman is from the 1800s? Do you know who Kimball is? You know, do you know who Pergington is? Do you know who Dave Fresnel is, right? Do you know who Fred Shepard is? These are the legends of fire service hydraulics, and this impacts your hose, the hose you selected. Once you've selected your nozzle, your nozzle pressure, and your target flow in your hand lines, then you can determine the construction you can be in. Then you have an idea of how fast the water is traveling through the tube. And finally, you need a discharge that reads accurately. If you find yourself questioning, you're watching this video, about hose construction. Well, maybe I don't know that much. Maybe I don't know what the weft is. Maybe I don't know what the warp is. There's no such thing as an all nylon hose in the fire service, but they sell nylon hose. What's missing? What's the other product in there? When does this hose melt? Which one is less likely to burn through, right? Which one's gonna fold flat? But if it folds flat, what are the cons? Which one's gonna be able to fold a little uh, stiffer and get, grab, give you a grab loop? Is that a pro? Is that a con? You know, why is it doing that? That's what this class is all about. You know, my consulting company goes around the country. I happen to be in Colorado right now, and we're talking about hose to several fire departments here because this is a big purchase. You know, if you have a rope spec, an apparatus spec, if you write a boilerplate for your pump or your trucks, you know, so you get what you want and you inspect it, you should have the same love for your hose because your hose is what puts out the fire. It attaches a nozzle and you want your guaranteed target flow in every handline operation in your fire department. I'm here to help you. This is about knowledge, education, and training. This class is all about giving you the knowledge 
and then the education so you can pick the hose that you can train with and then you need to consistently buy that hose over and over again. You need to ride a hose spec. Please, I look forward to your attendance in my class at FDIC in 2018. Uh, and I love the fire service and I'm just trying to make uh, the job better. Give some additional knowledge that needs to be out there. Thank you very much. Uh, look forward to seeing you at the IC 2018 Laguerre Engineering Handline Selection Class.